Well, there we go. That's my first technical um, glitch. I forgot to turn my microphone on. I've done that now. So just to check that you can all hear me before I start, use the chat function and just type in, um, yes, I can. Hopefully you can. Oh, lots and lots of people are arriving now. Yeah, clear as a bell. Oh, hey, Joe, thanks. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Gina. That's good. I'm always so nervous about the tech that it might go a bit wrong. But let's be honest, it's not normally the tech that goes wrong. It's the user. Um, I'm not too proud to admit that sometimes. <laughs> OK, I think we're going to make a start. Uh, we've got lots of people coming into the room um, and we've got some really exciting content to share with you today. So let's get started. So hopefully you can see myself and my beautiful colleague, Dinah. Um, Dinah, do you want to turn your mic on and say hi? Hello. Morning. morning. Is it morning? It might be afternoon. I don't even know. Um, I've been so excited about this. I've been up since 6 a.m., um, which is like the first time I've done that since March the 23rd, if I'm honest. Um, so what have we got for you today? day. Um, so let me just do some quick introductions. So the, today is all about introducing you to our amazing project around future female founders. Um, and we're going to talk to you about how you can uh, generate ideas and maybe get a little of inspiration if you need it to take your idea forward. So today is just the beginning and we've got lots and lots of content to share with you over the next uh, few weeks. So I'm Cuthbert, I am a um, learning development partner at Quarry Tig. So I've helped to develop this session along with my colleague, Dinah. Dinah, do you want to introduce yourself? Um, so my name's Dinah Griffiths. I'm also a learning development partner at Quarry Tig, currently uh, shortly to become a training qualifications partner. So been with Quarry Tig now um, for about four years, but my um, area of expertise before that um, was enterprise and entrepreneurship and business startup. Brilliant. Thanks, so. Dinah. Um, and we've also got Hannah, who's waiting in the background, and Hannah's going to be um, coming in to talk about her amazing journey at Poddle. So she came up with her business idea. I won't go into it. I don't want to steal her thunder, but she's got an incredible story to share with you. So she'll be coming in um, a bit later, so you'll get to meet her in person. So just kind of moving on. I just wanted to say, first of all, that uh, this project has been funded by NatWest Cymru, and we are working in partnership with Simply Do Ideas, uh, who are an awesome team. And when I was working um, for a fast track small business, um, a few years ago, I had the pleasure of sitting next to Simply Do Ideas um, when they were kind of really beginning to find their feet and the business was taking off. So to be working with them again, for me, it's a real privilege and I'm really excited to see how far they have come and they're just a perfect partner to be working with us um, and teaching you wonderful ladies um, how to just, just to think about all those things that you need to consider when going into business, when thinking about becoming your own boss. And what um, the Simply Do Ideas team has done is they've created an amazing platform for us to use. Uh, so for you to use as a future female um, organizational founder, you know, as an entrepreneur. So I do, ask, I'm gonna really push you to have a look at, at it. The, the, the link is there, if you wanna do a screen grab, of that so that you've got that for you for future reference we'd love you to get online and really start using that platform on our next session next week we're actually going to have joe um from simply do ideas online to run a session to talk to you about how you can use it and and make the most of this amazing platform where you can build ideas and kind of network and get inspiration from others. And we'd love you to tweet today as well or, or share our story on Instagram. So if you can use those hashtags, Business Women Wales, make it happen, future female founders, that would be awesome. All right, thanks for doing that. So I've got a poll, first of all, to, to launch. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna launch this 
now. I normally have a glamorous assistant to help me with this, but I'm doing this on my own. Um, so bear with me while I just launch it for you. Hang on a second. So I want to know why you're here today. Um, so it would be great if you could just, using the options there, just let me know um, what brings you here. Is it because you've always wanted to be around boss? Are you fed up of um, making money for other people? Um, have you had enough of working for other people? Because people are really weird, right? Um, are you looking to do something for you because it's your time um, working, you know, maybe being furloughed or working from home has realised that you want more flexibility or, or is it something else? And if it's something else, let us know through the chat function and I can see those as they pop up. But right, Ella, I can see that you can't hear me. Um, we're kind of okay our end and other people can hear. And there's very little point in me kind of repeating this because if you can't hear me, you're not going to hear these instructions. But I'm hoping that you can, you, yeah, it's all sorted now. Oh, Helen can't select an option. That might be me. I, like I say, I normally have a glamorous assistant. Let me uh, try and, no, it, it should, it, it's open. I've had, 73% vote. So I'm going to close that poll. Sorry if you've not been able to. Um, and let's just have a look at those results. So I've got 28% of you um, who want to be your own boss. And on behalf of you have decided that it's time to put your effort into you, which I love. You realise that it's your time. And that's like just brilliant because you know, we own our career and we've got one, we got one life and we want to make the very most of it. So, you know, if doing something for you is what's going to make you fulfilled, make you happy, then absolutely 100% go for that. So just thinking about what stopped you. Um, and very often at Quarry Tech, you know, we work with a lot of women across Wales and we're always hearing the same kind of theme. I don't have the confidence, that kind of imposter syndrome. Oh, I don't know where to start. There's too much paperwork. I'll never be able to sell my idea. I don't know how to price. I don't know when we'll get the money from. I'm not ready. I'm sure that you've had all these thoughts and I'm sure that those thoughts are gonna stay with you. But the important thing is getting started. If you've got an idea, then take that idea forward. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. And all of these are, are just like our inner, chimps just telling us that uh, because they're worried that we're putting ourselves out there and we're putting ourselves in danger um so just kind of silence that voice because you're here for a reason and i want you to remember that reason when you start having those doubts okay so why are we doing this why are we getting um support from that west to run this it's pretty simple it's because as women we have amazing ideas um we make great leaders but sometimes sometimes we put barriers in our way sometimes society puts barriers in our way and i'm not going to read those stats out um you can see them for yourself but ultimately there are still more opportunities for our male counterparts than there are for us so this program is designed specifically for females in mind because you are the future um, and the impact on the economy of, of small businesses from entrepreneurs is huge. And you know, we need to be contributing to that because we've got so much to offer um, and the advantages are there for us to see, you know, you can be your own boss, which is a wonderful thing to, to, to be in control actually, to, to look after, you know, you're in control of what you're doing. There can be financial rewards that might not come instantly. Um, it is a hard slog, but there is financial gain to have from it. You've got that sense of achievement. It is flexible, you know, if you're a night owl, you can work in the night. If you're a, 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 an early bird, then you can work in the morning. You can work around the kids. You can work around your other commitments. Um, it's, you can contribute to a cause that is close to you. It can be the change in the lifestyle that you want so that you can live the life that you want and, and the life that you deserve. Um, and I didn't put this down, but I am gonna say it. I think it's about sisterhood, right? Because if women support women, amazing things happen. They really, really do. And you know, by starting on this journey and through the platform, 
uh, through the events that we're going to be running. We're going to be building a community, a community of, of female entrepreneurs that are going to go out there and do amazing things. Uh, so what can you expect from the programme? Well, this is uh, session one, but we've got lots of ideas that will help you with idea generation, and we'll be looking at that as well next week with the Simply I Do, Simply Do Ideas platform. Lots of opportunity to learn and to share that learning, um, an opportunity for you to ask questions, to have conversations and to network with, with like-minded people out there and with a diverse range of people that are going to maybe generate more ideas and get you more excited about what you're doing. We're going to go over those business basics because where do you start? Um, you might not understand finance or accounting and that can be a barrier. So let us help you push those barriers to one side and we're going to challenge you. So through the platform there's going to be lots of challenges to really get your business started. And on that point I'm going to be quiet, take a step back and hand over to my lovely colleague Dinah, who's going to talk to you about um, idea generation. Over to you, Dinah. All right. Hello. Just muting myself then. I didn't want any noise in the background while you were talking, Kat. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick session with you now with regards to idea generation. So there will be some of you on the line that have already got an idea of what business you would like to start. Um, others of you will know that you want to work for yourselves. Um, you might have some sort of ideas around what you may want to do, but they're not concrete as yet. Um, and then some of you will have hundreds of ideas in terms of what you want to do, but you need to sort of break that down and think about which idea um, you're going to take forward um, in create into a successful business. So there are loads of different tools out there in terms of idea generation. I mean, one of the uh, more recent ones is uh, Bob Ebery's Scamper, which is looking at um, its an acronym. So it looks at different things. So it looks at the S is in terms of substituting. So substituting an existing uh, product or service. Um, you've got the C, which is combining. So combining your product or service with something else. Um, you've got A, which is adapting, so adapting a, a product or service that's already out there, which links in with the M, so modifying and modifying an existing product or service to be your own. Um, or could you put an existing product or service to another use? Um, I'm going to come back to that um, when I talk about bulletproofing um, your business ideas. Um, or would you e eliminate eliminate part of a product or service to improve uh, what already exists? Um, or finally, would you reverse what already exists um, and go backwards and change things? So. There's lots of different ways that you can generate ideas. So you've got brainstorming, you've got mind mapping, you've got reverse engineering, you've got using the scamper technique. Um, and we're going to have a look at a couple of those techniques um, as we go through the idea generation session. So um, what we're going to have a look at today are uh, around idea generation and idea scanning. And then as Kath mentioned, we've got the wonderful Simply Do who will be assisting you in terms of concept development and testing in your business analysis, um, looking at the challenge um, and how you're going to take that forward. And then the, what we'll be doing then is we'll be signposting you to further support that is available to you in terms of developing your prototype, your test marketing um, and your uh, eventual commercialization of your idea, which is really exciting. So if you could move to the next slide, Kath. Um, so in terms of your ideas, um, we need to make sure that your idea is going to be successful in the long term. Um, you need to make sure that your idea is sustainable and um, I'm going to come on later to how you can bulletproof um, your business ideas. But you need to make sure that your idea is valid, that it is sound, that it has got a chance of success. Um, and, you know, just have a focus group, chat to your friends, your relatives, um, you know, and speak to people as to whether they think that your idea could work. You know, is it relevant? Is there a market for your particular um, idea, your product, your service, your innovation? 
um, what originality is there to do with your idea? Because ideas can be brand new, or they, as I said earlier, they can be adapted or modified from an existing idea. But what makes your product or your service unique? What is your unique selling proposition of your business idea? Is your business idea realistic? Is it achievable? Um, I used to work with um, students in terms of uh, business startups. And sometimes, you know, they'd have the most amazing ideas. Um, I can remember one student entering a, a business ideas competition, winning uh, the business ideas competition with his idea. But the technology didn't exist back then to actually make his business idea a reality. And interestingly, sort of 10 years on, um, that business idea could now be launched. Um, so is it realistic? Is it achievable? And then is there the desire and the demand for your particular product or service? So these are some of the things that you need to think about when you are looking at your business idea and making sure that it will be successful in the long term. Okay, Kath. So where did you get your ideas from or where are you going to get your ideas from? And could you or would you carry them out um, to create a vision. So in terms of your business idea, have you got the motivation? Have you got the skills? Have you got the talents? Have you got the abilities um, to start up your venture? And a big thing is actually having the motivation and the confidence in yourself and your ideas. And this is what we're going to support you with. So what sort of person starts a new business and could it be you? So one of the things that um, you need to know and be aware of is things about you. What makes you tick? So what are your talents? What things come to you naturally? You know, do you have the ability to spot a bargain? You know, are you a bargain hunter online? You know, do you always get the best voucher codes to get money off um, uh, money off things that you buy. So are you a, a bargain hunter? Are you a good communicator? Is that one of your talents? You know, could you um, sell plans to the Arabs? You know, are you a really good salesperson? Or do you have an eye for design or creative thinking? So what are your talents? So think about that. Another thing to think, think about, are you, what are your interests? Now, are you going to create a business based around something that you are interested in, that you are passionate about, that you want to work on full time? Or, you know, you need to think about, well, actually, I want to keep that separate. I want to keep that as something that I enjoy outside the work environment. So you need to think about whether you want to incorporate an interest or whether you want to keep it as, as separate. So, you know, can you incorporate things that you're passionate about, the environment, social causes, um, health and fitness, equality. You know, what do you believe in? What is your passion? What is your interests? And then how much knowledge do you have around a particular area? Do you have a thorough background knowledge in terms of the area that you want to develop a business idea in? Or are you going to learn it? OK, so do you have knowledge of the hospitality industry, the gaming industry, the engineering industry? You know, what sector do you want to go into um, and think about how much you need to learn? And then also the skills. So skills are things that you might have learned. So they could be speaking another language. It could be around um, cooking. It could be using HTML or computer languages. It could even be, you know, double entry bookkeeping. So what skills have you got? to be able to take your business idea forward. So you need to know what you can, you, what you are capable of, what you know about, but also what you need to learn. And I'm gonna tell you about a tool that you can use to identify those things. So what I'd like you to do now, and you can also do this activity after the webinar as well, I'd like you to get a pen and a piece of paper. So I'll just give you a, a second to, to grab a pen and a piece of paper. And what I'd like you to do is I would like you to draw a heart in the middle of the piece of paper. OK, 
Okay, and once you've drawn the heart in the middle of the piece of paper, what I would like you to start thinking about is things that are important to you. And I think lockdown has given a lot of people that realization of the things that are really important to them, that are really close to their heart. So what I would like you to start doing on your heart is thinking about the things that are closest to your heart and then the things that are further away from your heart. Okay. You can also, if you want, have one side of the things that are positive and then other things that can have a negative uh, influence as well. So you can do it um, both ways. But I would like you to put the things that are close to your heart in the centre and then make your way out with regard to the things that are less important to you but are still of importance. So think about things that are important to you. What is important? So is it friends? Is it family? Is it your children? Is it your partner? So what is closest to your heart? Um, pets even, you know, your dog, uh, your cat, your bird, you know, are, are pets close to you? Is music a passion? Is, have you got any hobbies that are really important to you that you would not want to give up? Okay, because we're starting a new venture as well. You need to think about your time and where your time is going to be spent and think about the things that you would not like to um, release from your life. You know, do you spend, you know, an hour, two hours a day on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram or Twitter? Um, you know, is that something that you're passionate about? Is that the way that you communicate with people? Is that close to your heart? You know, is there a places that you want to visit? Um, you know, is there places that you want to go on holiday? Um, are there dates in the year or dates in the calendar that you think, you know, I can't give up that date? Um, you know, I want to be free on that day. It's close to my heart. I need to remember it. Um, are there any celebrations that you hold dear that you need to make sure um, you take account of? Is there a place that you go every day? you know, that you love going, you love going for a walk or things like that. So what do you call, clo hold close to your heart? So on this image, I want you to draw everything that is close to your heart. And you can also draw the things that are close to your heart that shouldn't be. Like for me, chocolate. I love chocolate. It's close to my heart, but it shouldn't be and I need to give it up. Okay, so is there anything that is close to your heart at the moment? That you need to to give up is it you know do you spend money on takeaways that you shouldn't you know all things like that but when you've thought about all those things that are close to your heart what you need to do then is think about what are your personal passions what are your personal passions and what are the values that you want to take forward into your business idea so you know have you got an organic ethos is that something if you're starting a food business that you'd like to take forward? Have you got a, a community interest that you would like to take forward? Have you got a passion for educating people? Okay, so think about what is close to your heart and then how you can incorporate that into your business idea, into the values, the ethos and the ethics of your business. Okay, so that's one activity um, that you can do in terms of the um, idea generation process. And that activity is um, one of unlimited um, activities. So going back to um, ideas, so there's such a thing as an innovation matrix and ideas generation um, techniques that come along with that. So in terms of your business ideas, so some of you will have breakthrough innovation ideas. They will be new technologies. They may be high tech, high investment um, that will be brand new innovations. Um, so they might be breakthrough innovations, for example, open innovation structure of DNA, or they could be sustaining innovation in terms of changing products or services or improving products or services that already exist and you making it your own. You know, take, for example, the Dyson Hoover. How many times has, has that changed? How many times has the Apple phone changed? Or you could be involved in basic research and taking forward a basic research idea. So 
um, if you think about it at the moment, investigating and trying to come up with a vaccine for COVID-19. So that potentially would be a, a research idea. Or is your idea disruptive innovation? And I love disruptive innovation. You know, is your idea changing the status quo? So for example, um, Netflix, you know, Netflix has changed the way that we watch television. You know, we can binge watch uh, television, television series and things like that. And I have to confess, I've not binge watched anything the whole of lockdown. That's my little uh, badge to myself. Um, and then in terms of idea generation techniques, there's techniques that you can then use depending on what your idea is. So are you going to do some brainstorming? Are you going to do some checklists? Um, are you going to write ana ana I can't say it, analogies? Um, are you going to look at a project and list all its attributes? Find out what you love about that project product or service and what you potentially want to take forward into your business um, or are you going to um, try and create some disruptive innovation and look at all the attributes of that particular uh, product or service that you like and how you can change it and make it bigger and better okay so it's different uh, ways that you can look at your ideas So what we're going to do now is we're going to use some of those techniques and what I'd like you to do, I would like you to type in um, alternate ways of using a brick. So I've got a brick here, this is one type of brick. What I'd like you to do just in the next two minutes is write down and type in as many alternate uses for the household brick as you can think of. So get your thinking, get your ideas on, and what alternate uses are there for a household brick? Okay, this is an old activity I used to do as a, an icebreaker, and um, it used to get people sort of thinking. Kath, do you want to write on the wall any ideas that you may have? Okay, so we've got um, a doorstop, so uh, people might use those already. Uh, we've got a paperweight. Uh, we've got to use it as a stencil, as a gym weight, uh, supporting shelves. Um, and then we've got a really good one here. And this is what I hoped to get. Um, somebody has said to break it up. Um, and that's what one of the things that I wanted uh, people to start thinking about is you don't actually have to look at this object as a whole okay you can break this down into different parts and um, you can grind it up and also you know how many different household bricks are there you've got the household brick here that's got the bevel in it but then you've also got the household bricks that have got multiple holes in so there is uh, I think about 15 or 20 different styles of household bricks okay so you know that's another way of looking at your product or service and looking at can it be broken down into separate parts? Um, you know, how could it be packaged in different ways? You know, thinking about your idea, but also what potentially could shoot from your idea to become a new product service. OK, so you might have the one idea there, but it's about taking it and looking at the bigger picture. So we've got things like creating dumbbells, painting it, creating steps. Um, uh, in the past, I've things, had things like barbecues, um, creating those little, you know, the little sand, the little sand um, ornaments, all different things like that. So this activity is about getting you to think and looking at the bigger picture in terms of your product or service. But also, if you could change or adapt whatever your offering is, other people could change or adapt it as well. And it's about making sure that you are first to the market to do that as well, okay? Also as well, if you launch a product, what you might want to do is launch new products so your business can grow, okay? And it's about having that bank of ideas there that once one product um, 
maybe saturates the market that you can then launch a new product or service after it. Okay, thank you, Kat. Okay, so um, if we have a look at Solar Buddies, oh, we've gone past that, we can come back to it later. Um, so one of the things that's really important to them, oh, there we are, back we are. Right, so Solar Buddies, they have no design background, no manufacturing background. They came up with a concept and thought, well, why not? We just want to give it a try. If I don't know, I can ask somebody. There's no harm in us having to do that. And I think that's really important, is whatever your idea is, don't let anybody tell you that it won't be a success or can't be taken forward because it can. You just need to have the right support to enable you to do that. Okay, thank you, Kat. So I'm just going to quickly run through a few ideas that have come or developed um, in the current situation that we have. And one of the things that you need to make sure is that your idea going forward is either bulletproof or you can be fast into the market, make a quick profit and then exit the market um, and make money in that short period. So it's either about making money quickly off an idea, um, like the fidget spinner, for example, or um, making sure that your idea is sustainable and is in the market for the long term and is bulletproof in situations that we've currently got. And in the situation we've currently got with regards to um, COVID-19, I think that's come forward is it that necessity drives innovation. And actually the period we've just had has been a really good period of time for innovation and people coming up with ideas and looking at how they can run their businesses differently. So for example, you've got the food trade, you know, how many new food delivery services have popped up. If you look at a business in Cardiff, uh, Ross Brothers, they used to de deliver um, fruit and vegetables to the restaurant trade. Well, they're now delivering to the domestic uh, people in Cardiff um, and Barry and the Vale of Glamorgan and, and potentially further afield. So looking at um, delivering essentials, other companies are delivering sweet treats. Um, other people have utilised existing equipment and manufactured products in a different way. So, for example, Pandaren whiskey, um, well, Pandaren, and they do vodka and everything like that, and gin, they've actually been producing hand sanitizer. So they've changed the equipment to produce something new. Then there's also social enterprises that have uh, started um, off the back of um, COVID-19. So for example, there's an, a gentleman in Roos that started producing um, PPE using his uh, 3D digital uh, printer and he did some crowdfunding and himself and his son, uh, sons started producing PPE that has gone into the Heath Hospital, that's gone to community doctor surgeries um, and that has happened across the UK with you know people utilising equipment to produce PPE in different ways. So you know can you change and adapt equipment that you've already got or do you just start selling and trading online uh, with minimal costs through things like eBay? Um, you know do you hire out a new product that is really popular like hot tubs. You know, there's been a massive, uh, massive growth in the sale of hot tubs. You know, do you start hiring those out? Um, you know, could you start up an arts craft or clothes repair business online, you know, through organizations like um, Etsy? You know, are you passionate about photography and could sell your um, photographs to um, organizations like Shutterstock? Um, Personal trainers, personal trainers have traditionally done one-to-one -one training support. You know, you just look at how um, Joe Wicks has taken off. You know, he's earned, um, I think it's is it 36,000 pounds now in terms of revenue that's been generated from his YouTube channel uh, for the NHS. Um, but then also smaller businesses, you know, um, people like Mamma Molatika, the Cardiff Blues rugby player, he's doing free online training sessions. You've got organizations like Operational Fitness um, offering a week of training for 9.99 with um, money going to the NHS. So they're generating revenue for themselves in periods of time when traditionally 
they wouldn't be generating any revenue. You know, look at the gig economy in terms of delivery and delivering um, food and, and treats and things like that to people. And then we've got our own Beth Baldwin, who's been creating gift hampers um, and selling those to generate revenue for uh, charitable purposes. So necessity drives innovation and the period that we've just had has made a lot of organizations look at their business ideas and looking at them in terms of can we come up with new ideas concepts product services or can we um, change our product or service uh, to enable us to survive so make sure your business idea is bulletproof Okay, so just one technique that can help you do this, and apologies for the slide, it's just this is a concept um, from Nesta, and um, they talk about um, blueprinting your ideas and the concept of reverse engineering, and it's similar to Simon Sinek's start with the end in mind. So think about where you foresee your product or service being, and then taking it back. What are all the steps that you need to take? So rather than taking it from a starting point and working your way uh, in a linear fashion, start with the end in mind. What do you want to achieve? What are your goals? And then work all those steps backwards. So the example on the screen here is an example of an aeroplane flying to a destination. So what this airline company did to blueprint, uh, to blueprint sorry, their um, offering was to look at the passenger. So what is the passenger experience? What happens to the luggage? And then what happens to the airplane? And thinking about all those things and working it back from the de destination back to the starting point of the passenger in their house, you know, taking it back you know the passenger booking um, in the first place and um, looking at how they pack their luggage you know taking and thinking about all the different components of an idea so in terms of your idea you can think it back in terms of you know what is the marketing what social media uh, would you do would you do what social media are you confident and competent with you know what support might you need you know there's look at all those different things so you know think about the the product think about how it's going to get to market think about the competition um, think about the customers you know all those different aspects of a business idea and what you can do is blueprint it and that's doing a diagram of all the different components of that idea um, and then putting it all onto paper um, I've had people in the past do it on a wall in their house and they've got all the different elements going off on a wall in their house and um, if you're not more tech savvy you can do it on a, a blueprint on your computer you know just thinking about all those different aspects of your business and how you're going to take that forward um, and then lastly you just need to think differently so you have got a problem with your idea that you need to solve okay so you know some of the problems how would you sell ice the Inuits how would you sell coal to Newcastle how would you sell chi uh, tea to China how would you teach your grandmother to set eggs you know how could you nail jelly to a tree how could you push a rope how could you herd cats so you've got problems there and what you've got to think about is how you're going to solve it how are you going to make your product or service stand out so for example in 1997 um, Rachel's Organic Dairy looked at the dairy market um, and they looked at how they could stand out um, and enter the market and have a success um, and one of the ways that they um, decided to take their brand forward was to have black pots so they had black pots when in a supermarket, all you had in front of you was a uh, was um, shelves of um, pastel colours, so immediately their product stood out. So you need to start thinking about potentially what are your problems and how you can take those forward. And I'm going to pass you over to Kath, who's going to talk you through those aspects. Uh, thank can you all hear me? Yeah. Thanks so much, Dinah. Do you want to just turn your camera off for a second? Fab. Um, wow, loads of information um, to absorb there. 
and I'm just going to give you just a little bit more um, and then we'll go over to, to Hannah and our case study and hear about how, how she's done this with her business. Um, so I want us to look at problem, uh, problem statements, okay, and I would love you to start thinking about creating your own problem statement because when we started a business, we tend to think of the solution and we get super excited about that solution and we almost get carried away with it. Um, and we forget about the problem that we're solving. And if we're not specific about the problem that we're solving, we can potentially uh, potentially be speaking to the wrong people. Um, so it's really thinking about your, your prospects, your potential customers, um, putting yourself into their shoes and really analyzing and break it, drilling it down, drilling it down um, into what your product what is a problem that product that solution is solving? And that should be your starting point. And by doing this, it's gonna help you then come up with ideas. So similar to the reverse engineering. So this is just another technique that you can use. So your problem statement um, is at the heart of your startup idea, okay? And it speaks to people, it speaks to um, your audience, intrigues them, they want to find out more, they want to kind of join your tribe, and really it needs to be the focal point for everything that you build. Um, and a good problem statement, it focuses completely and entirely on that problem. And your business is probably going to be solving lots of problems, so you've got to focus on that, word that you know, what is the biggest problem that you solve? So it means asking questions and drilling down, and it can be hard because we're really close to our ideas, we're proud of our ideas, we know what we're solving. Um, so I'm gonna go through some techniques to help you think about how you might go about doing that. So one of the things I wanna talk about are pain points. Um, and thinking about the pain points that your customers go through rather than offering solutions. So I've got a little diagram here. Um, if you need to sell a drill bit, then, um, the fact that you have that that person needs a quarter inch drill bit is a solution but the pain point for that customer is they actually need to drill a hole specifically that size so what is the customer's pain uh, pain point so just to get you thinking start with one of your current solutions or products and just try to identify the true pain point of your audience um that that solution addresses and by doing that you're in their shoes and when you're in their shoes, you're gonna build an emotional connection. And when you build an emotional connection, um, people will come to you because people buy from people that they trust, okay? Um, so this is really important and should actually form part of not just your idea generation, but should carry right through um, and helping you kind of structure your business plan and um, to think about how you're gonna market your, your, your product. Um, so you're, you're speaking to your customers in the right way. So I've got a little case study for you. I'm just going to spend five minutes talking about this. So this is around um, my future. So my future is a local organisation, and I sit on their uh, on their board for the the charity arm. Um, and I've worked really closely with Gemma. She's an awesome um, an awesome woman. Some of you may may know her, and she's doing amazing things. And my goodness, she's shown resilience, and she has stuck with this idea from the beginning. But she has gone through so many different stages, and the, and she's had to pivot and change her idea. But the problem has never changed. So she's basically come up with an app, an app that young people could use to help them find opportunities. And it's they tend to be kind of neat, so students not going to university who struggle really to get on the career ladder and work out their next step. So you need to break it down and ask yourself four questions. What is the problem? Who has the problem? Why is it a problem? And where is the problem? So let's look at that in this grid. And like I do a little screen grab if you want to kind of take this away and apply this to your own business. So just think about and ask yourself the question, who has the problem? And have you actually validated that the problem is real? Because sometimes we come up with a solution and we love it and we're proud of it, but is anyone actually gonna buy it? Um, and the only way we know that um, is by kind of validating it beforehand. And you get validation when people are willing to kind of spend their money, you know, to part with their hard-earned money for your product. Brenna, can you just pop yourself on mute a second, sorry? Um, 
So the second bit is, what is the nature of the problem? Um, so what research or evidence do you have that states it's a problem? Um, because you're going to need that if you want to maybe go to, for investment at some point in your journey. Why is a problem worth solving? So thinking about the impact on the customer and where does it arise? Where have you seen it? Where's your team seen it? Where have your friends seen it? Where is that problem in its natural habitat? So I asked Jen to fill this in for me and these were her answers. And obviously when, she, when, when we did this at the beginning, there were lots and lots and lots and lots of answers, but we've kind of summarized this just to give you a flavor of how it works. I don't want to go over it. You can all read, but you can see there, she's thought about who the problem is and talked about how she's validated that the problem is real. She's talked about the nature of the problem and the evidence that she's got. And I know I've seen the reports that she's read through and you know, there is a lot of evidence out there to support that this is a problem. So why is it worth solving? So this is about the impact, um, the impact on the end users. Um, but also she's looked at the impact on society, so she's been really broad with it. And the great thing with this is, is that um, to do like a risk, to do a risk analysis, you need to ask the question why, at least five times. So you ask a question, you answer it, but why? And then you just keep drilling down and drilling down and drilling down until you get to that root cause. And then finally, where does the problem arise? And Obviously, there's some information there on where she has observed that. Now, if you wanted to use a kind of different canvas, this is a similar one that you can use. So this one not only asks those questions, but gets you to think about the emotional and the quantifiable impact as well. So the emotional impact is walking in the shoes of customers, understanding their pain and the quantifiable impact is actually thinking about that measurable impact. And it also gets you now to start looking at your competitors. Who else is doing this? And what are they doing? Um, and what are the disadvantages of that? So you're actually getting to see um, the viability of you know, your idea. Um, and again, just an example here, um, showing kind of those alternatives, the shortcomings, and the emotional and quantifiable impact. So my future came up with this problem statement. And this problem statement really is at the heart of what they do. Um, and everything that they've developed since keeps coming back to this. And I think this is quite an emotive problem statement and your problem statement should be emotive because you wanna get someone to feel something um, about your product. It needs to be the one, you know, that you want them to come to you because there's always gonna be competitors. There are always gonna be people out there doing what you do. You just gotta make sure that you're doing it um, better than anyone and that you're speaking to the right people at the right time and you're talking to them about the problems that you are solving. So they said that career paths are for young people um, who aren't going to university and you know their own forms and clear, confusing, hard to navigate and it's leaving these kids you know misguided and motivated, misplaced, impacting on their lives, their earnings, their, their future and the local economy. So just a few sentences that sums up the problem statement and as a result, they have come up with a, you know, a great product that is truly solving that problem. Um, so that was kind of short and sweet, but I hope it just gave you a flavor of how valuable problem statements can be. And it's at this point where I'm so excited because we get to bring in Hannah. So Hannah, would you, oh, there she is. Hi, Hannah. So you, do you want to just say something so I can see if I can hear you? No, I think, am I, am I on mute? You are wonderfully loud and looking beautiful. So everyone, I'm gonna shut up, um, which is hard because I love talking, um, but Hannah is an incredible role model. She really is. Um, she's a heropreneur. Oh, that makes me go goosebumpy when I say that. She's award-winning um, and she's really just kind of taken on a, a market that, um, you know, you've got some big, big products and she's come in and she's absolutely disrupted it and taken over and I love it and she's Welsh and she's one of ours so I'm going to shut up now Hannah and I'm going to um, leave the room open for you. Well, thanks very much um, yeah we are a Welsh business but I don't have your lovely accent and I wish I did um, but I was born and born and raised in Gloucester and then moved to Wales um, so yeah 
we are a Welsh business and proud to be so. Um, I just wanted to pick on a couple, pick up on a couple of Catherine's points actually, um, that are so crucial. You do need to start with your why. Um, you can't, well, you'll struggle to make a business if it's just about the money, um, which I'm sure we can all appreciate. And I think Catherine went into that beautifully. Um, we are at a disadvantage as female founders. There is just no getting over that. I'm sorry, but there's much to be done. Um, and then necessity is the mother of all invention. So pandemics aren't always necessarily a bad thing for business. Um, so yeah, just, yeah, I was listening to that speech and just nodded along so much in so much of what was being said. Um, I've only got 10 minutes and um, I really don't want to go over um, because we're getting to the end of it now and I, I want to keep your attention. So I will keep this quick and I've got three points to hit on here in my notes. Um, broadly, it doesn't matter who you are is the first point. Um, don't be intimidated is the second point. And then eat the toad is the third point. So I'm going to crack on with number one straight away. Um, I'm going to get straight into it. My mum was an alcoholic. I grew up in a very chaotic environment. Um, I would say I did OK academically. Maybe that's a bit generous. I got 2-2 in geography from university, which is fairly useless. Um, so I joined the armed forces because there weren't too many avenues open to me at the time. Or so I felt. Um, so I joined the RAF. I was in the RAF for 10 years and there I got um, a good dose of discipline, confidence, um, determination, and, and resilience is something I believe that can be learned. I went into the armed forces with very little resilience, um, and I came out the other side with, with quite a lot of resilience. Of just I just need to get this job done, and whatever barriers are in the way, I'll just crack on and do it. Um, so I didn't have an MBA. I didn't have any money. Um, a lot of entrepreneurs that you'll meet in the entrepreneur ecosystem will have money um, and it, it does irritate me a bit because it's not fair but it's just the way the world is so people like Jamie Lang I don't mean to pick on him the candy kittens guy on Made in Chelsea um, yes he started a business yes it's successful but he didn't have far to fall if it failed also it seems I don't know the guy maybe I'm being unfair but um, yeah I didn't have that I had nothing my parents were terrible um, I had they you know, didn't have any amazing contacts down the golf club. Um, and I've been at pitching events where people have got MBAs from Cambridge and I'm there pitching up against them. And who am I to be there up against them with my 2-2 two in geography? So I would say, first point, very quickly, it doesn't matter who you are. You, you, you have every right to start a business and, and make a bloody good go of it and be incredibly successful as someone who's got millionaire parents, all the contacts in the world and all the academic qualifications behind them. It, it would help if I had an MBA, I'm not going to lie, I've had to learn on the, you know, on the hoof, um, but it just doesn't matter who you are. Uh, my second point, business intimidation. Um, if you buy something or you have a service and you sell it for more than you bought it for or more than your service cost to provide you've got yourself a business if you go on alibaba the sort of chinese amazon tomorrow and buy 50 water bottles for a dollar and you sell them for two dollars the next day you're making revenue and you're in business um i think when i first started i was i was really inclined to get quite intimidated um especially at pitching events where they're 90 percent men who do have this business vernacular you know they have that business lexicon they're they're very good at talking about revenue and profit and gross and net and you know I came from the armed forces where it wasn't about profit so this was all new to me and I, I let myself feel quite intimidated so yeah that, that's my second point that um don't let business terms and the sort of exclusiveness of the world put you off because you have every right to be there and I think that if you, you are gonna feel some of that imposter syndrome and even some of the top businessmen and women in the world feel that imposter syndrome and everyone at a pitching event feels a bit uncomfortable, you're asking somebody, well, if you're at a pitching event for investment, you're asking somebody for their money. So you should feel a bit uncomfortable, but that, that doesn't mean you shouldn't be there. So yeah, I think that, um, yeah, ha just have the confidence, it's gonna sound a bit of a paradox, but have the confidence to know that, um, you probably will feel uncomfortable and that's totally okay. Um, 
And if you don't understand a business term, ask. I've asked some really stupid questions over the years um, that I've been, well, sort of year and a half, two years I've been doing this. I mean, I didn't know some of the real basics early on, but it, I, I think, I hope, I look less stupid asking the question than I did just nodding along and being found out later on. Um, so if you don't know something, what well, is your right to ask and have that confidence to ask? Um, so that is my second point. And then thirdly, um, eat the toad. I, I, I read this uh, quote in a business book, um, I think it was last year, and it sounds really silly, but it really changed things for me. So when you're at the beginning of starting your business, um, I'm sure many of you now just see a mountain ahead of you. Like, how do I register on Companies House? Will I need to register uh, as a VAT business? My business plan has to be so many pages long, and where do I even start? Um, eat the toad basically means if you've got something rubbish to do that day, if you've got something that you're scared about doing, you've got to discipline a member of staff, or you're just unfamiliar with it, so VAT return or whatever, um, do the rubbish thing the minute you get into work. It's, it's probably when you've got the most energy, you've got the clearest head, and then once it's out of the way, everything else in your day will just seem so, that much simpler. So, yeah, for me, um, it, it, had, it had quite an impact. So if, if I've had to deal with um, a difficult member of staff or if I have had, um, you know, goods have been ordered and they're just not up to standard and I then got to have a difficult conversation with somebody, it is the first thing I do. And then, yeah, by comparison, the rest of the day does get so much easier. Um, aligned to the eat the toad point is my very last point, which is um, MVP, minimum viable product. So um, I, I set up my business um, once I left the RAF. I, um, so, so I do skincare. Uh, if, you, if you're not familiar with what we do, we do a probiotic hand gel and uh, a sun cream, which is one of our best sellers and other things, but there are sort of two main ones. Um, I concentrated so much on getting it right, speaking to the right chemists, speaking to the right manufacturers and making sure it's perfect that I wasn't getting my product to market. Um, there are ways I could have got my minimum viable product, so something that wasn't quite right to market to test the market quicker. And uh, with skincare, it is a bit diff it is quite difficult because of the, the development cycle and the nature of it. But get your any whatever product or service you want to sell, get a version of it in the market to test as soon as possible. And it serves so many things. So it gives you feedback on the market, what you need to change. It gives you an idea of revenue, um, which is great. because then you can go after business loans. Or if you need to go after investors, you've got something to say, hey, we've already sold this many. And um, so you've got something to back up your claims. And then if you're wanting to scale and grow, you can go after big retail. If you if you can say we've sold this many and actually we're going to improve it by doing X, Y and Z. So, yeah, um, basically eat the toad do the rubbish thing and try and get your MVP out as soon as possible. They're definitely the two biggest lessons I've learned over the last um, year and a half. Um, so yeah, I, I do think that as females, we, um, it, it's just a fact that we are invested in less than our male counterparts. Um, anecdotally, I've been to pitching events where one particular event I went to in London in the city, and I was the only female pitching out of eight. And in the audience, there were maybe two females out of about 150 in the audience and a lot of people looking for tech. And I don't do tech, I do baby skincare. Um, so yeah, we may have to work, work that little bit harder um, is, is what I found. But then as women, I'm being, I'm being sexist now towards men, I am sorry, but I, the, the female business owners I've come across are incredibly conscientious. And I, there, there are some men who are incredibly conscientious as well, but I've also met some men at pitching events and it's, they're very confident and it's, it's bluff and it's black and, and there's no numbers behind it. There's no business plan behind it. And I've never met a female that's done that. So yeah, I think um, my investors certainly feel like they can really trust me because I've looked into everything and explored every avenue. So we've definitely got that going for us. Um, so I think I'm going to end on a high there. So yeah, 10 minutes, very quick. Um, I could go on more about my journey, but in a nutshell, I definitely wasn't on paper um, somebody who set up a business and do very well at it. Um, 
and we've just seen 400% growth in this quarter. So it's uh, it's going pretty well. So if, if, if I can do it, and honestly, I wasn't qualified, I was just determined and just kept going, then anyone in this group can for sure. Oh, Hannah, I think that's such a great message to end on as well. Um, I also love Eat the Toad. I call it Eat the Frog, but I apply it. And it's something that I always share um, with everyone. Yeah. It's perfect, isn't it? Um, but no, as somebody just said, wow, Hannah's amazing. What a boost. And absolutely, what a wonderful way to end this session. And so much learning um, to be had from you. Like Joseph just said he's loved that. Um, for simply do ideas so we are running a little bit late and I am sorry but we I'm still going to run the questions if you, everyone Hannah, have you got time for that I don't want to put time yeah, yeah. That time yet um so if you have got any questions Dinah do you want to come online as well if she's there Dinah yeah. so oh, just just yeah. <laughs> um, and we just had Hannah's a real inspiration. Thanks, Hannah, really inspiring. So, Hannah, thank you. This is just, it's exactly kind of what we wanted for today. And you're going to now be inspiring, you know, potentially, there's nearly 50 people on this on this uh, session today. So, potentially inspiring, um, you know, another 50 women to go on and, and do what you've done, which would be incredible. Somebody's asking if there's slides or audio for this session. Um, I just need to check what we're doing around that. We don't always share the audio, um, but we've got your details. And my email um, is katherine.foot at qualitig.com, K-A-T-H-R-Y-N. So drop me an email with your details and I'll get back to you on that. Oh, just confirmed now from um, Jenny, one of my colleagues, that there will be. So yeah, if you would like the audio, then just drop me an email, katherine.foot at qualitig.com and we can arrange to get those out to you. Now, has anyone got any questions for us or probably for Hannah, because, you know, um, Hannah's achieved so much, you know, do take this opportunity. Oh, a link is gonna be sent out afterwards as well by email. Thanks, Helen, for informing me. Well, I, was gonna ask, I was gonna ask Hannah, where did you get your idea from? Where, why did you choose your particular idea to take forward? Um, so, uh, I was in the RAF for nine years and I was always very adventurous. I, I love the outdoors travel. I did things like cross-country skiing and um, some amazing stuff. And then I had my children um, and I wanted to take them out and about on my adventures. And I found that they had, they've got really sensitive skin and there just weren't products available. So they get windburn cheeks, like chap lips from the, um, the weather and stuff. Um, so I started making my own in my kitchen really. And it grew from there. So I started with the lip balm uh, which is it was quite easy to make actually, uh, beeswax, um, coconut oil, sunflower oil, stuff like that, melting it down. Um, and then it grew from there. I found um, a, a chemist. I worked with Glinda University in Wrexham. I um, found UK manufacturers, which is quite hard as a skincare startup. Um, a lot of people are forced to go to China uh, because it is dominated by, as you said, like P&G, Johnson & Johnson. It's a huge market I'm part of and I am tiny um so yeah that's how it started initially and then it it grew um I suppose I suppose that was a bit of an MVP actually the lip balm uh, to test on the market first so I've got a question from Jo Parry she wants to know how, how you keep resilient in difficult times what's your secret Good. above anything else whatever like I, I know I've made the point a lot, but whatever degree you've got, money, whatever, if you're resilient, your business will work, unless it's a terrible idea. But if it's a solid idea, just be resilient. And I, I, I don't know, I've just got a, a serious motivation to make this thing work. And I've dealt with all sorts of rubbish. I'll try not to swear. Um, <laughs> you know, orders, I've, I've had orders turn up. Um, where 10,000 units have been wrong and I'm grappling with the insurance company and, and maybe I'm not insured for it because of whatever clause or we've had stock go missing um, and a haulage company trying not to pay out for that. Um, we've had we've had all sorts of trouble. We've had skincare not work once it's been through all the testing. So you've got to start from square one because the chemist wasn't quite right and that's cost us thousands. I can't, I won't bore you with all the things that have gone wrong. More stuff has gone wrong than has gone right for sure. And it's just the only thing that keeps me going 
is something that Catherine touched on your like your why what is your why and my why is not money if it was money I think I'd have given up a long time ago it's a nice byproduct but um, my my family um, we're also partnered up with a charity that I'm very passionate about and we donate to them um, we're just about to give hand gels away to the NHS because we're making um, an alcohol gel which is about to come out called Hero Hands um, so yeah I, I'm definitely motivated by external things which, which which gives me a huge drive so when the rubbish thing happens I think that resilience comes from I, I've just got to get this done and I, and I I do think being in the military for nine years where it's just we never had enough money or people but you had to get this thing done so I've got that mindset of well whatever it is I'll just get it done even if it's I don't know a VAT, I've, I was told to do a VAT return I never did before that sort of thing I'll do it Sorry, I've just literally lost all of my, um, <laughs> sorry about this, there we go, I pressed the wrong button. Thank you, Hannah. I've got, there's so many questions coming in now, we might not have time to answer all of them, I just need to find them a second, scroll back down. Um, so, one has come in from Sarah Reese, and she asks about how you cope around children. Um, in my previous business, I've been out uh, every spare minute with work. Um, so they were babies at the time and I totally get that. I remember I remember three and I've also got my own business and fitting I forget to feed them some days. Um, you know, it's oh mum, it's lunchtime. Oh yeah, you're not in school, I've got to feed you. That kind of thing. So yeah, how, how do you manage? Um oh, yeah. So my husband's furloughed at the moment, he's a Virgin Atlantic pilot. Um and honestly, if he was at work you just you just squeeze it in where you can and just know you're not alone and i'm i'm in a baby business group and i text them the other day to say my head's about to explode and there were lots there was lots of support and i think just having your crew that you can rant to occasionally and then and, and you said you burnt out noticing when you're getting close to that burnout so take a step back go meditate go for a run whatever it is you you do that helps i do try and carve out 20 30 minutes a day for yoga or a run um I try and make sure I get enough sleep, I, you know, and, and I rely heavily on uh, my husband and I, I'm in, but then he's a Virgin Atlantic pilot. So he sometimes is away for three, four days. He's just out the country. And then I, it is very hard. There's no two ways around that. Um, yeah, just, I squeeze the business in where I can. And the work's always there. So you don't have to do everything right away. It might slow down revenue a little bit, but the work's always there. Yeah, I think that's really honest. Um, you just, you do, you just fit around it, don't you? Diana, myself and you, we're both the same, aren't we, as well? Juggling about five million different balls and just hoping that they don't drop. And if they do, don't give yourself a hard time either, because that's life, right? And, um, you know, stuff happens. And I think actually we build our resilience by accepting that stuff happens. Um, and once we accept that, we don't kind of beat ourselves up about it so much. And it sounds simple. But it's but it's true. Um, oh, so many more. I'm only going to take a couple more. Uh, somebody asked about um, your manufacturing experience. So this is interesting. Do you know anything about manufacturing? How did you come up with a prototype? It, I'll be honest. It's the bit I like least. I like the creativity side. It's the bit I still like least. A year and a half on, and I I deal with all sorts of manufacturers. Um, yeah. It, it, the, the prototype so what i would say because I, I don't want to go on it use professionals so i used a professional graphic designer a professional pro product designer and i had them help me source my first manufacturer because it's not a world i knew um and, and, and with anything in business if you're not familiar pay the professional because it's worth it even if you need a business loan to do so um because it'll, it'll pay dividends in the end and, and don't worry i wasn't familiar with manufacture and i'm still not great at it but um yeah they want your custom so go in there and ask the questions um a lot of it's about relationship as well try and build the best relationships you can with anyone you work with be it a supplier or a manufacturer um and yeah build that relationship from, from the beginning thank you and i'm gonna sorry Dinah. There's one... yeah there's one more here that i think is really pertinent um sarah saying that she's frightened of failure not getting enough clients what would yeah. you advise I think a fear of failure is a quite a good thing because it really gets you out of bed in the morning and you won't fail 
if you just keep going. It might take a bit longer, it might look a bit different. This brand is not how it started. These products are not what I started with when I put pen to paper. Um, think failure is such a bizarre term because you, my business has been a succession of little failures and I just work around that one and I work around that one and, and now it's working. Um, but you, you won't fail if you change and grow with what the market needs and if you just keep going. I, I guarantee it. Brilliant. It's about making sure that there is a market for your product, isn't it? It's about asking people, even friends or family, would you buy this product or service? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, and, and yeah, you know, we I know it's kind of really corny, like, oh, we all learn from our mistakes, but we do. And if we stop seeing them as mistakes and actually just part of the process, um, then, you know, you know that you're going to succeed. And for me as well, perfection doesn't exist. There's no such thing as perfect. So don't aim for that, just always aim to improve. And I think that the businesses that have been really successful over lockdown, they've been able to pivot and they've been able to react to that market. And I guess the challenge to you guys, and I'm going to leave it then on this note, but the challenge to you guys is that um, we don't know what normal is going to look like in two, three months time. So now is a really great opportunity for you to start thinking about your, your idea and your problem and thinking about how that can fit into what the new world is going to be. And it is going to be about your ability to adapt. So I guess I'll, I'll leave it there because I know people have got lunch and tea or no, dinner. Maybe some of you've got a few kids. I mean, obviously I'm not. Um, <laughs> but thank you so much to everyone today for you guys for being here, for Hannah for being so inspiring and um, for Dinah for being so flipping clever and knowledgeable about um, everything and for pulling this all together and to uh, um, NatWest and Simply Ideas I guess for working with us on this. Um, so on that note I'm gonna end if that's okay. So I'll try not, I normally blow a kiss but I need to stop learning to, I've got to stop doing that. Um, so I'll just close it with a little smile. So take care Thank everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.